Hi, my name is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and math advisor for Texas Instruments. This video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. And in this video, we're going to take a graphical look at the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus is really fundamental, and it relates the two main objects of study in first year calculus that of the derivative and of the integral. So to start out, we're going to look at a very simple function, x squared minus x. And our task is to try to figure out an antiderivative for this function. Now this is one that we could very easily get, just guess an antiderivative for. Uh, but we're going to make use of the fundamental theorem of calculus to manufacture an antiderivative for it. First thing I want to do is just take a look at the graph of the function. And for this, I'm going to use the zoom decimal window. I like that window because it uses equal scaling in both the x and y directions, so it's easy to read slopes. All right, let's manufacture our antiderivative using the fundamental theorem. I go to the math menu, and I look for fn int. Now, fn int is going to be a definite integral, but we're going to use as our variable the upper limit of integration. Now we're going to integrate our original function, which we have stored in y1. And I'm going to try to use good form here, as uh, we really shouldn't use the same variable of integration as we use in that upper limit. So I'm going to use the variable t. So we'll be integrating from 0 to x, y1 of t, dt. Now as we try to graph this, you may be wondering what's taking so long. Well, keep in mind that what the calculator is doing is calculating a definite integral for each point that it plots. The fundamental theorem of calculus guarantees that our original function, shown in blue, is the derivative of the new function, shown in red, that we just created using definite integrals. Now let's take a look at a function that we can't find an antiderivative for in closed form, e to the minus x squared. We'll still be able to create an antiderivative using fundamental theorem. Because that definite integral function is being computed for every point, I'm going to speed up the graphing by changing the x res found in the window menu to 5. That means the graph will be plotted for every 5 pixels. The blue bell-shaped curve is that of e to the minus x squared. It's the derivative of the new function we've created. Where it's equal to 1 at 0, our function has a slope of 1. Where the blue curve is close to 0, our function is very flat. Now suppose we took our definite integral function and we changed the lower limit of integration. The fundamental theorem of calculus would say we should still have an antiderivative. On the other hand, we know that two antiderivatives for the same function should only differ by a constant. So we've plotted a new antiderivative using the fundamental theorem where we used a lower limit of 2. And sure enough, we get a new graph having exactly the same shape, but we can see it's been shifted down. Now let's turn to another example. Suppose we're presented with the graph of a derivative, and that graph is piecewise linear. I'll create an example. Going to the math menu and scrolling all the way down until I find piecewise. After selecting that, it gives me a choice of how many pieces I would like to my graph. I'll stick with three and just press OK. Notice it gives me a template where I can enter the three formula pieces and the domain for which those formulas will hold. I'll make the first piece have the formula negative x minus three. And that's going to be valid for x less than or equal to negative two. Now to get the less than or equal symbol, I'll go to the test menu, and there I find all of my inequality symbols. Number 6 is less than or equal, and now I'll put in negative 2. For the next piece, I'll make that just constant. So my second formula will be just negative 1. That's the value that the first formula has at negative 2, so the pieces will be connected and I'll have a continuous graph. And we'll make the domain for this negative 1 piece be between negative 2 
and positive 3. Now I can again go back to my test menu to pick up those inequality signs. And notice you can enter a compound inequality with no problem at all. And now finally for the third piece, let's make the formula for that 2x minus 7. So it will equal negative 1 at 3. And then we'll have this formula be valid for all x greater than or equal to 3. And again, I'll get the greater than or equal symbol off of the test menu. So that completes my piecewise formula. And if we graph this, we should be able to see a nice piecewise linear graph. I'm going to turn off y2 so we'll only see the piecewise linear I just defined. So if this is the graph of the derivative of the function we're looking for, we can see that where it crosses from positive to negative, that must be the location of a relative maximum for our function. Where it's constant, our function should have a constant slope of negative 1. And over here, we should find a relative minimum. Because we've actually defined this as a piecewise linear, we can graph the antiderivative. I'm going to go back to the window menu and set the x res to 5. And I'm going to change the lower limit of integration on our definite integral function to 1. Let's take a look at the graph of our antiderivative function and see if it matches what we thought. This function that's being plotted in red should have as its, as its derivative the function whose graph is blue. Okay, let's take a look at the features of the red graph and see if it actually matches what we predicted. Over here where we said there should be a relative minimum, sure enough we do have that. And here where we said the slope should be constant negative 1, matches up. And here where we said we should have a location for relative maximum, sure enough we do. And that concludes this short video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus.